So I thought I'd give you a quick video showing you how I'm using the kitchen garden over winter. And that's very different to the way that we use the allotment. And so, you know, our objective really is for absolute minimum maintenance of the kitchen garden, but also to try and use it for what it's best for uh, and not try and sort of duplicate the sort of thing that we would do on the allotment. So the allotment is primarily going to be all of the salad crops, all of the spinaches, the radishes, the turnips, and all of that sort of thing uh, going into autumn and through winter. And the back garden is really going to be primarily, well, let me show you. First of all, we have a lot of containers in the back garden, and a lot of these have got tomatoes in them at the moment. And so they will be finishing, well, they'll definitely be finished by October and so in october all of these containers get planted with garlic pretty high density about 10 12 cloves per container and all of that is going to be for green garlic i.e garlic that is harvested immature before the monobulb has started to differentiate into individual cloves and at that point you can eat the whole bulb without any you know papery uh, skins on the cloves and you can eat the whole stem as well so you can kind of treat it a bit like i like it like a sweet leek so in here we've got parsnips we've got three parsnip beds we'll be harvesting those all the way through winter um, we've got beetroot we'll be harvesting these beetroot and the salad onions that are interplanted with them all the way through autumn and then we'll probably switch over to the over to the crop that we've got in store that we will have harvested off the allotment in October. Where those carrots are, we'll be planting um, probably uh, lamb's lettuce. And so I'll show you that lamb's lettuce in a minute. In fact, I'll just overlay it now so you can see it. Back there, we've got a variety of different collards interplanted with um, kaolan. Kaolan is a nice interplant. It's really fast growing. It's got lovely leaves, but it does tend to go to seed a little bit. So it's kind of like a crop to be eaten in the autumn rather than all through winter. Got some more beetroot there, more lovely salad onions, some more parsnips. Again, they'll be harvested all the way through winter radishes that will come out really soon i'm not sure what's going in that bed but in this bed is going in salad rocket and again that will be harvested all the way through autumn in winter it slows down a little bit and so we'll probably switch to the stuff that's in the polytunnel then so i'm just putting that salad rocket in now and it's looking pretty good it looks like a little tiny bit of flea beetle damage, but it's getting a bit late for flea beetle outside now, so I think it should be okay. I've dipped these holes roughly eight inches apart, and there's two seeds, I think, per module. There's a few more in some of them. Uh, that gives me smaller leaves, but lots of them, which is ideal for salads. So those are looking nice. I did have a few where there was three seedlings to a module. So the ones that get the most sun, so these two rows here, I've left those as three, but the ones that get less sun at the back there, I've thinned those to two. But you can see they've got some, they'll grow fairly well for the next month or so, like those radish. Um, even though they get even less sun, they've still uh, rooted up quite nicely, as you can see there. They're not too bad. I think they're only about five weeks old. So the nice thing about that planting is that a lot of these beds then start to come free or will already be free in March. And that allows me to get a good start on all of the kind of salad crops, early carrots, all of those sorts of things under fleece in the kitchen garden which frees the allotment up for things that can't really be started that early outside on this side we've currently got turnips 
that's going to be lamb's lettuce. I'll come back to that bed. This bed are little kales planted late and they're so late really that I won't get much of a harvest off them through winter but they'll really come into their own in mid spring. In late spring we'll have new kales but in mid spring these will be really bursting into life and so they'll give us a lovely brassica harvest at a time when the more mature kales will have long gone. They'll have gone to seed a month, six weeks early, earlier. Same kind of thing is true of these spring cabbages. They will be eating those all the way through spring, partly as loose leaf, and then later on will uh, be in the hearts. Obviously, there's too many planted in there. They'll get thinned out and the thinnings will either be eaten or transplanted. Same story here though with the kales, young kales that won't go to seed as quickly as the mature kales. This is all interplanted with turnips. They'll be all eaten through autumn. And then we've got more parsnips. So this is the summer fruiting strawberry bed. And I'm just leaving it at the moment to develop runners because I want some of those runners to transplant into other places. And then I'll let all obviously be cut back. Down here, we've got cauliflowers for autumn. We've got red cabbage, just the last few red cabbages that we haven't picked yet for autumn. And then these beds are going to be field beans and uh, corn salad. And then obviously we've got raspberries and stuff at the back there and blueberries and things like that here, but that doesn't really matter. And down the side of the house, this is basically our potato store. So we've still got the main crop potatoes with a little bit of green on them. So I've left the tops on these but obviously that'll be coming off by the middle of September. And then all these containers down here will all get moved onto this side of the house and stacked up just like these are. So these are the second early potatoes. We've got some more down here, but basically by mid-September, all of these potatoes will be stacked down here and there'll be, I don't know exactly, I can't remember, 34 containers. And I like them stacked here just because they don't get too much rain. So they stay moist, but not too saturated. And then we harvest them from the, potato, um, from the containers as we need them one container a week. Here I've got some curly kale that I'm just about to plant out. I don't normally plant it out when it's as big as this, but this bed had spinach in it and so I had to wait. And so I potted those on. And then these are the kaolan. And you can see these are lovely plants. These will get interplanted in. And obviously that would again make for too dense a bed here. But because this kale land will be harvested through autumn, whereas this kale will be left to strengthen up so that it's ready in spring, it works quite nicely as an interplant. And then this kale land will be gone by the time we get to winter. So there we go. And you can see I've put the kaolan down that far edge there because once that's harvested, that'll make room for my early peas, which will go in into the March, April time. Now I do have some cutworms in this bed, which can still be a problem at this time of year. In fact, there was quite, they had uh, quite a feast on the spinach, but um, I have watered with the fruit and veg protection nematode uh, this is probably the last time you would need to do it because cutworms generally aren't too much of a problem a bit later on in the year. But uh, for now, hopefully I can get rid of those. So hope you like this quick video. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel and I'll see you soon.